Two prominent Africa-focused analysts uh, discussed the proposition with VOA's Jeffrey Young. Uh, I do think this is the African century. If you look at the projections for working age population, the fastest growth rate this century is going to be in Africa. In fact, all of the net growth in working age population is going to be in net Africa. So there is an opportunity there. I think we're not there yet because the infrastructure is not ready. That's Africa specialist Paulo Moro with the Peterson Institute for International Economics in Washington. Many sub-Saharan African states saw their economies grow rapidly during the first decade of this century, driven in large part by international demand for oil, minerals, and agricultural products. Much of that demand came from China. That in turn led to more oil exploration, more mining for other natural resources, and the growth of African markets. As money flowed into state coffers, some African governments used the cash to make needed infrastructure improvements and to invest in other areas to lessen their dependence on oil and minerals. Just over 15 years into this century, Jennifer Cook at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington gives Africa reasonably good marks for its economic development. Well, it's been, it's been generally good. You've had uh, over a decade of fairly sustained high growth rates. Um, but you have to acknowledge that much of that growth was driven by high demand in China and high global commodity prices. The last two years, as commodity prices have dropped, you've seen these countries getting something of a reality check on how much progress, in fact, they've made. The World Bank's most recent report suggests Africa's economic growth is slowing down. In a January 2016 report titled Global Economic Prospects, the bank reported that sub-Saharan Africa's collective GDP, or gross domestic product, dropped from a 4.6% growth rate in 2014 to 3.4% in 2015. That was the slowest growth since 2009. For this year, the bank is predicting a continent-wide growth rate of 4.2%. Many of the African countries hardest hit by the economic slowdown are those most dependent on oil production. A year and a half ago, oil was trading close to $100 a barrel. Since then, it has tumbled to the point that by early this year, it was below $30 a barrel. While prices have risen above that level recently, Bloomberg Business forecasts that during 2016, oil is predicted to be no higher than the mid $30 range. CSIS analyst Jennifer Cook says that while African states wait for commodity prices to rise again, they should make structural changes and expand their economies into other sectors. How do countries in that interim period use this opportunity to enact reforms on, on fuel subsidies, distorting subsidies, to diversify both the economy and public investments, uh, to diversify their tax base, for example, uh, and to invest in infrastructures like electricity, transport, or ports that you cannot have long-term growth without. Jennifer Cook and other analysts say that a key element in making this the African century will be the ability of the continent's leaders to persuade potential investors that their investments are safe, that the days of nationalization and intellectual property theft are over. Now, for more on the African century discussion, Jeffrey Young joins me in the studio. Hello, Jeff. Great story there, but you know, you can have all the natural resources and have the manpower, but there are certain key elements you must put on the ground. What are those? You have to have infrastructure. You need roads to get goods to market. You need ports to load the goods on ships to sell them to somebody. You need electricity and communications. You need broadband. To join the world economy, you have to have connections. And Africa needs to build up the infrastructure and plug in to the rest of the world. And that's how economic development gets a big boost. And uh, this is a big continent of over 50 nations. It means also there has to be, uh, you have to connect the individual countries in order to achieve the uh, advantages uh, that come with all those uh, you know, resources across the continent. Absolutely so. All these bilateral trade agreements are essential because your neighboring country may have something that your country needs and vice versa, so you work out a deal. This is what world commerce is all about. So experts are saying you can't just sit and fantasize. You have to do something very practical about it. And build it and plug it in. Power. President Obama actually did mention yes, the initiative that the did. U.S. is really fronting there. How critical is that? 
If you don't have electricity, you don't have anything else. If you don't have electricity, you can't run business. You can't run commerce. Yeah. And people cannot be connected by the internet to the rest of the world. Electricity is the core of modern life. So we've got to get those right. Thanks a lot, Jeff, Pleasure. for sharing this with us. Uh, well, Jeffrey Young is VOC's senior investigative analyst.